How you going guys? Tony Angus back again and we're continuing our chat about managing escalating behaviour. And so this is post number three about escalating behaviour. So if you've missed post number one and two, I strongly recommend you go backwards in time, catch up with post one and two um, on disagreements and then manifestation. So the, the body language and facial expression and verbals of someone who's escalating. If you didn't, if you miss those discussions, then you, you need to catch up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a look at how to manage the gorilla. What's going on for the gorilla, and I guess in a way, how to not feel so confronted by the gorilla. The gorilla's a confronting thing. They puff up, as I described last time. They puff up, they get angry and aggressive, stomp around, they're typically louder, typically more volatile, typically less gentle with things, slamming doors and pushing chairs and things like that. So let's move on. Thank you for your questions, by the way. I had a couple of questions. And so if I remember in this post, I'll get to them. If not, I'll, I'll do another one. So it is at our, their escalation is going to now depend upon our involvement. So what you choose to do and how you choose to deal with these people at this stage is gonna make all the difference. And typically people get it wrong. See, everywhere I go, your policies say stuff like, advise the person that they're being out of line, that inappropriate behavior. Advise the person or ask the person to stop that inappropriate behavior. Advise the person of the consequences of continued inappropriate behavior and enact those consequences. So that's a typical sort of outline of a policy. The problem with that policy is the gorilla doesn't care about your policies. It doesn't care about your requests. It doesn't care about inappropriate behavior. You are now either a stumbling block or a friend, a friend or foe. You are an ally or an enemy. That's what's going on for the gorilla. I've got something going on, you're standing in front of me, so you prove, are you going to fight me on this? Don't forget, this is fight or flight or freeze. It's not fight and flight. You don't fight and flee at the same time. This is fight or flee. So if I'm standing in front of you, angry about something, then I've had my dial turned to fight mode. I'm in fight mode, are you? Do you typically go to work and end up in fight mode? I would suggest not. And so that puts me at an advantage over you already because I've come to you in fight mode. Now, the danger here is if I present to you as an aggressive person, I might trigger an amygdala response from you that says, I'm not safe here. I need to go into fight or flight. And as we discussed last time, fight or flight drops you from your rational brain into your mammal brain, which is the emotional brain. And so you as an employee may end up being less rational in your responses to me, to the gorilla. So you need to work out strategies that allow you to stay in your rational brain. Good, solid strategies, tactical options we call them. And you need to understand what are your tactical options and have a really good handle on dealing with the gorilla so you don't freak out and end up a gorilla yourself. Because one gorilla versus another gorilla is not a good outcome. That's not what we're trying to achieve. And by the way, meeting fire with fire not recommended in managing aggression, particularly with the gorilla. So there are times maybe you can get away with being a bit more confrontative, but not with the gorilla because he just looks at you as a stumbling block. So your first message, the first thing you've got to get over, the first hurdle is, are you friend or foe? If you imagine that person's in fight, the bell's gone, ding, and they're going, righto, and they look at you and they go, righto, 
are you friend or foe? Um, I'm in the ring with you. The bell's gone. Are you my opponent? So that's the first thing that their subconscious mind wants to know. Who's against me here? I'm in fight mode. There must be a reason. I've got something to fight. Is it you? So that's the first hurdle you have to overcome as an employee of a business is how do I overcome that hurdle? Before we move there, I encourage you to understand something about the gorilla that I think is really important. The gorilla is a recruit only. The gorilla doesn't run the show. This small emotional brain called the limbic system, this fragile mammalian brain is saying, I'm in trouble here. I don't know what to do. I feel loss. I could be frightened. I'm certainly worried. And I don't know what to do. And I don't know how to get this message out to you. So I'm recruiting my gorilla. Hey, Mr. Gorilla, come and tell the world what my problems are. And the gorilla comes out from the corner, very eager. Right, oh, I've got this. Listen up, people. This is going on and that's going on and it's not good enough. There's your gorilla. Now, the gorilla is not in charge. The gorilla is recruited by this small, fragile, emotional brain. The limbic system. So forget the gorilla and talk to the limbic system. Don't worry about trying to placate a gorilla. Talk to the, the fragile, emotional brain. Now, if you were talking to a German tourist, what language would you use? German. If you're talking to a Chinese tourist, what language would you use? Chinese, etc. If you're talking to a emotional brain, what language do you use? The language of emotion. Don't give it logic. It's not the language it understands. Speak to it in emotional terms. Use emotive language. And so we've looked at signs and symptoms of this gorilla aggression. We've determined that it's loss. There's your diagnosis. We've looked at some signs and symptoms of escalating behavior. And based on that, we've made a diagnosis that this is a loss-related aggression. Now we provide a treatment, and the treatment for loss-related aggression, the way to treat the gorilla, is through supportive language. You must be supportive. So I'm going to write this here, supportive. This is really important because everyone knows you don't poke a gorilla. That's just dumb. Here's a story. Five nurses dealing with an uh, amputee. And the amputee was very, very um, concerned about his ability to look after his children, given that he was now uh, an amputee. And so he was at this particular hospital to get a prosthetic and uh, to, you know, to go through his rehab, etc., physio. But he was escalating his behaviour simply because of the loss of maybe not being able to provide for his children. And that's a big loss. And he was escalating, stomping around the place, and there were five nurses dealing with him. Until finally one nurse has had enough, and she pushed through the other four nurses and said to the guy, listen, if you don't stop right now, I'll call security. I've had enough. You really want to threaten the gorilla with your little security? Of course... He's just leaned in and said, call them, call them all, and they'd better be big. People threaten with police and threaten security and threaten to have them removed and all that stuff all the time. Wrong. <clears throat> so let's go over what you should be doing. Supportive language. So the first thing I recommend is, not first in order, but we're going to go through a series of potential strategies here. One of the things you can do, if you choose to communicate, by the way, so I'm not telling you to, I'm not telling you to communicate. Communication is an option. 
And we're going to talk about the tactical options model later on. And the tactical options model is simply a pie chart that has a number of slices of pie. It's just easy to draw eight. One of those slices of pie would be communicate. But there are other slices of pie that you can choose. So you don't have to communicate. If you choose to communicate with the gorilla, here are some communication strategies. Number one, look for opportunities to agree with them. Look for opportunities to say, yeah, you know what, I think you're right. Or, yep, you're 100% correct about that. You don't, ha if, you don't have to agree with everything they say and only agree with things that you do agree with. All right, so you can't agree if they say, you know, this is the worst public transport in, uh, company in the history of the planet. I don't want you saying, you know, you are right, we are the worst in the history of the planet. That's just dumb. But you can say something like, look, I, I certainly agree that we, that we haven't managed this well. Or I do agree things haven't gone that well today. Something like that. But don't oppose. Remember, the gorilla's looking for an opponent. So find a way not to oppose. I also, in the way I phrased it, I do agree that, you know, we've had some things go wrong today. The way I phrase that is a gentler way of putting it. And that's important. They will want to be heightened. They will want to be high level in their aggression and in their communication by just providing a more gentle flavor. We call it, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. We call it reframing. And so you can reframe in a more gentle way and you can reframe in a, in a more positive way. So agree. Now here's one that's challenging for a lot of organizations. Apologize. And the reason it's challenging is for whatever reason lately, organizations feel like or seem to be under the impression that if you apologize, you're taking blame and you can now be subject, subjected to civil litigation because of that. Okay. My understanding of an apology in this context is that it's more of a statement of sympathy. I'm sorry for what you're going through. Not I'm sorry for what we've done. Of course, that has to be part of your mechanism. And we've heard it over and over again, such and such would like to apologize for the delay. We apologize for the inconvenience. So they are apologizing. And what a terrible world we would live in if people refuse to apologize. Sometimes that's all your customers need is for you to acknowledge that there's a problem and apologize for it. So get used to. Now don't use the word, we apologize. If you're doing it personally, that's great for an announcement. <clears throat> that's great over a PA system. But I don't want you saying it personally. I apologize. I'd much rather have you say, I'm sorry. Even I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm terribly sorry. One of the things that I spoke about this in a telling it like it is post, sincerity is carried. How are you saying these things? So say them sincerely and mean it. Another great A word, and we, I'm not going to run through th these alphabetically. This just happens to be another A word. But I really like these. Acknowledge. Acknowledge their situation. Acknowledge that this is difficult for them. Say something like, I recognise that this is really hard for you right now. I realise that you're going through some stuff. I know that this is a terrible situation. I hear that you're really upset about this. That stuff. Acknowledge that they've got a problem and it's real. This is a real problem. Okay? This is, this is where I find um, we're getting it wrong. You get somebody who goes into a cafe, they get the wrong drink. They've ordered a cappuccino and you give them a long black. They get upset and you say, right, mate, it's only a coffee. It might be more than a coffee. And remember, there's a, there's a wonderful saying that I encourage you to hang on to. Everybody has something going on that you know nothing about. 
So whilst it's only a coffee to you, this might be the fourth thing in a string of bad things that have happened in, in their recent history. And so don't nail them on the fact that it's just a coffee because that's very oppositional. All right? First, look at the signs and symptoms. How are they escalating? And then make a diagnosis. What's the cause? There's two others to come. We'll look at those soon. But if it's loss related, then spin back up into here and this is your treatment if you choose to communicate. Now, this is a very powerful tool I'm going to give you right now. This is one of the best ways to show you're not an opponent. Not only do you acknowledge that there's a situation here, but you're going to validate their emotions. Don't validate their behaviour. Behaviour is typical. Behaviour is typically generated by a gorilla that has one way of going about it. I'm going to be big and I'm going to be loud. I'm going to stomp around. I'm going to make a lot of noise. And if that fails, I'm going to be bigger and I'm going to be louder and I'm going to stomp around and make more noise. The gorilla has a fairly blunt strategy because it's not a sophisticated thinker. This is your subconscious thinker. So don't validate behavior, but you can validate their emotional responses. And this for me is one of the most potent ways that you can show the gorilla and the small brain that you are not an opponent here, that you're here to help. The validation sounds like something like, I get where you're coming from and you have every right to be angry. Of course you'd be upset. It's no worry, it's no wonder you're concerned. That sort of stuff, where you're almost giving them permission. You don't say that, but I guarantee you, the gorilla is walking around. The gorilla is walking around, waiting for you to oppose it. There's a certain amount of energy in reserve for you for when you say, calm down. So it's kind of in the back of its mind going, go ahead, tell me to settle down. So you don't. I don't want you to. What we do instead is we say, no wonder you're upset. This is a hard situation. You have every right to be angry. Then you might say, I'd be angry in your shoes. So use a statement of empathy. Say something like, I can only imagine what you're going through, but I imagine if it was me, I wouldn't like it. So statements of empathy. Now, people will say that empathy is about being in their shoes. It's not. It's about imagining what it would be like in their shoes. Remember, you don't have to have gone what they gone through what they're going through in order to empathise. Empathy is about pain. I've stubbed my toe. I know what it's like to be in pain. Not, I've, that guy's been stabbed. I have to get stabbed to know what that's like. No, I know what it's like because I've been punched. Um, I've walked into a tow bar. I've banged my head on a kitchen uh, cupboard. I don't know what it's like to be stabbed, but I know what pain is about. So i felt bad pain, that must be bad pain. There's empathy. So, say that, I can only imagine what that must be like. But I do imagine it would be horrendous. One of the things I encourage you to do is use informal language when you're dealing with the gorilla. Don't use sophisticated, um, don't use corporate language. Don't ever use corporate language. Get rid of that stuff, honestly, with the gorilla. With the gorilla, use street language. Say things like, you know what? I totally get it and, and it sucks for you right now. And if it was me, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Very unsophisticated, but heartfelt. This is the language of the heart. It's emotional language, language of the heart. You wanna speak language of the heart to the small limbic system. There are other things to do. I won't write them all up in here, but you can normalize it by saying that anyone would feel the way they feel. 
you can reassure them. Don't reassure them that everything's going to be all right because it may not be true, but reassure them that you'll be there and that you'll do your best, okay? And that, and that you're good at what you do. Reassure them that you'll be with them. Um, you can even affirm them. I think you've done, the right, you've done the right thing here. Well done. Don't want to be too cheesy about it. And now it's about combining those. So you might just say, yeah, you know what? You're 100% right here. This is a real problem and no wonder you're upset about it. I'd be upset too. So what I'd like to do is how about, how can I help? What can I do now? Let's, how about we, and then go on and help. Offer help and provide help. And then follow through on that. Make sure in this you're listening. Listening is a massive part of dealing with the gorilla. Listen to what they've got to say. Give them credibility. You may recall in a previous Telling It Like It Is post, I talked about the human condition. We all want to be valued. You want to be seen to be important. And so if that's the case, give someone some time and you might find that they respond to you better. Okay, so this is some of the communication that I want you to use with. Don't use the word but, use the word and. I agree with you, and it's a difficult situation, and you have every right to be upset, and I'd be upset, and I'm here to help. What is it that we can do? That stuff. So that's one option, communication. And if you choose to communicate with the gorilla, that's how you do that. Now, I also posted in uh, Telling It Like It Is about training, practice. Practice, practice, practice. You're not just gonna automatically be good at this stuff. Practice it. Go and practice with your colleagues. Go and go home and practice it at home. You're not, this is a perishable skill and you're not automatically going to know how to do it. And the, the last thing I want for you to do is practice this in front of a gorilla. When a person comes in off the street and they're angry and threatening and stomping around and now you go, God, what was that thing about, I don't know, would he agree or something? Practice. Get better at this. Righto, guys, that's the end of this little session. I hope you've enjoyed this post. If you have, again, hit like, click share, subscribe to the channel. It's uh, fantastic to have you all on board. Um, I noticed that some people who are emailing me and Facebooking me um, and not coming through the, the YouTube comments section, but that's okay. Check me out on Facebook if you'd like to. This is Tony Angus. Um, this Tony Angus uh, corporate training, tact. Um, visit the website. We would enjoy. I've enjoyed all my dealings with you, and uh, your comments are much appreciated. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I appreciate the fact that you're looking to grow and be better communicators. If there's anything you want me to post in the future, sing out. I'm happy to do that if I think it's you know relevant to the topic. Um, stay safe. And I look forward to speaking to you again. We're going to explore this further. There's lots more to come. Good on you guys. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao for now.